All right, so in this next module, now we're going to talk about revision. And as I've said before, I think revision is really, really important because, because that's where the elegance comes in in writing. So here's some tips I'm going to give you for revision. And this is just sort of an overview. Read your work out loud, do a verb check, cut clutter, do an organizational review, and get feedback and editing help. So I'm going to go through each one of these in turn. So one of the big tips I can give you on uh, revision is to read your writing out loud. That's because the brain actually processes the spoken word differently than the written word. You may have noticed that in this course as I've been reading some examples to you out loud, you kind of hear where all the awkwardness is, where all the kind of uh, repetition. You hear that better, your brain picks it up better when you hear it rather than when you see it. I don't know why that is, but it's just that's just uh, true. So always read your work out loud. That can really, really help you to pick up where things don't sound so good. Sometimes it even helps to read it out loud, put it in the tape recorder, and listen to it back. But usually you'll catch it just in, in reading it once. So read your writing out loud. That's a really great way to improve your writing, especially on revision. Another really great tip on revision is to do a verb check. Okay, so if you're kind of stuck and you're reading over your uh, paper and you think it just it doesn't really have any oomph, it doesn't sound great, it's kind of boring, you just you're not quite sure how to approach improving your work. Here's a really easy thing to do. Take a couple of paragraphs and go through and underline each main verb, the main verb in each sentence, okay? And after you've underlined them all, kind of go back and look and see what your verb choices were. Do you have a lot of to be verbs? Is, are, was, were, be, been, am? Do you have a lot of passive voice verbs? The reaction was observed by her. Do you have buried verbs? This is where you've got a really long subject before you get to the main verb. So we had this example earlier, a careful monitoring of achievement levels before and after the introduction of computers in the teaching of our course revealed it took forever to get to the verb. So pay attention, very careful attention to your verbs because as I've mentioned several times, the verbs are really what drive the sentence. If you've got good verbs, your writing is really gonna be lively and easy to read. So, so pay attention to your verbs by actually going through and underlining them all and asking yourself, do I have lackluster verbs, do I have passive verbs, and do I have buried verbs? If you have any of those things, rewrite your sentences to avoid that. Use the thesaurus to find some good verbs. And as I've also stressed in this course, you need to go through and revision and cut your own work. And that's hard to do. It's hard to cut your own work. But now that you've done a lot of editing practice in this course, um, hopefully you become better at noticing some of these problems and cutting unnecessary clutter. And you're going to be doing it on your peers' work um, this week, and so that will also help you uh, to practice. So things to watch for. This is just a little review of what we did in week one. So you're going to watch for dead weight words and phrases. So be on the lookout for things like, it should be emphasized that. I want to tell you about, in my opinion, uh, empty words and phrases. These are things like, methodologic, basic tenets of important that really don't add anything to the paper. Those long words or phrases that could be short like muscular and cardiorespiratory performance rather than fitness. Also unnecessary jargon and, and acronyms. So as I've mentioned before, try to catch yourself if you're using a lot of acronyms and go back and replace those with the actual words. I would stick to only the most commonly used acronyms. And of course, jargon. Ask yourself, do I really need this to be the jargony word, or can I say this in a simpler way? Try to catch repetitive words or phrases. So last week we had the example where they had said, teaches clinicians, and then in the next sentence they wanted to have something different, so they said, it guides clinicians. Well, actually, we didn't need that repetition. We uh, actually converted that into a single sentence. And be on the lookout for adverbs. I always put these in in a first draft, so i got to go back and find them and you know get rid of them. Very, really, quite, basically, generally, all those adverbs you got to go. So uh, get used to picking on your own work and cutting out all of those uh, extra unnecessary words. That's all the sentence level editing type of things. So if you're going to do the sentence level editing to make everything sound more elegant. And then kind of at a higher level, you should also do some kind of what I call an organizational review. And the way that I do an organizational review, I actually do this for students. So in the margins of their paper, for each paragraph, I'll, I'll tag each paragraph with just a phrase or even a sentence that sums up the main point. You know, like, this paragraph's about pathways. So I might even just write pathways, mechanisms, you know, on that paragraph. And I'll go through each paragraph, and I'll give that little tag. 
what I inevitably find is that there are multiple paragraphs with the same tag in different places in the paper. So then I move those paragraphs around so that I improve the logical flow and bring similar ideas in the paper together. So it's a really easy thing to do. Just go through your whole paper in the margin for each paragraph, write down in one or a couple of words what was the main point of that paragraph that I was trying to get across. It helps you really evaluate how well you structured your manuscript. Hopefully, if you did a good job on your pre-writing, what comes out in your first draft is already well organized. But sometimes, you know, things happen and you get something that doesn't have good organization. Now you've got to go back and you've got to pick that up and you've actually got to do an organizational, a structural revision. That's much harder to do than just sentence level editing. So hopefully you don't have to do too much of this, but a way to kind of point out where you might need to do a little bit of organizational review, big picture, moving things around, is to do this kind of tagging exercise. When you're editing each other's work, uh, the, the assignments are fairly short, but still that's another way to kind of help edit your peers work is to do this same, same kind of tagging on the different paragraphs. So do a kind of high level organizational review. And then revision is re it's really helpful if you can get outside feedback. We're all, it's, it's hard for us all to edit our own work. You get better at it the more you do it, but it's still hard to edit your own work. You get attached to some of your work. So ask someone outside of your department, hopefully outside of your own little niche in science, ask somebody else to read your manuscript. Uh, it doesn't have to be somebody who has any training in editing or anything like that, just somebody who's uh, intelligent, uh, has enough knowledge of science to be able to read a scientific manuscript, but hopefully not uh, domain-specific knowledge. And make sure that they can tell back to you the main findings, the take-home messages, and the significance of your work. Even without a technical background in your particular area, they ought to be able to get those three things from your paper without any problem. If they're having trouble getting that much out, ask them to point out particularly hard to read sentences and paragraphs in your paper. They can just, you know, circle them, underline them. And those, they can point you to the places where you really need to do some revision. Or they may just say, well, this is written at too high of a level and you really need to bring it down one level, make it simpler, make it clearer, make it more active and fun to read and less boring to read. So get some outside feedback from somebody uh, outside your immediate field. And find a good editor to edit your work. Somebody who actually knows how to do that sentence level editing. It's really, really helpful if you can find somebody like that who can edit your work. And sometimes, you know, uh, a spouse, a significant other, a friend, if they're willing, can make a good editor. And maybe you'll meet somebody in this course who's a good peer editor who you can team up with later and you can edit each other's work. Uh, it's often good if it's a reciprocal relationship where you edit their work and they edit your work and that way both uh, parties benefit. So if you find a good person to work with like that who knows something about sentence level editing, that can really help improve your work. And hopefully you also have somebody like an advisor or an editor um, down the road who can polish your work at the end of the day. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.